TFL EV is brought to you by Flow Charger, maker of reliable, high-quality charging stations for your electric vehicle. Hi everyone, I'm Max of TFL, and today I have a very special opportunity. I'm at the Michelin Lawrence Proving Grounds in South Carolina with Brembo. You've no doubt heard of Brembo as a maker of, well, great brake hardware, but the future, so they say, is hardware and software. And what Brembo has done is introduce this new system called Sensify that is for all kinds of cars, but has particular benefits for electric cars like this Model 3 performance behind me, Tesla, of course. So this car has appropriately high-performance Michelin tires, and we're gonna test it today on the track to see the difference between what it's like with the stock brakes it comes with, which are Brembo's by the way, and this new Sensify system, which is supposed to make the vehicle not only more efficient, but also higher performance and safer, all with one platform. Before showing the track footage, what is Sensify? Brembo's been working on the tech for a while, and the idea here is using quicker electronic actuation of the brake caliper on each wheel, whether that's through triggering a hydraulic master cylinder like they're doing on the front wheels with this Tesla Model 3, or by using completely electronic rear floating calipers on the back wheels. With Sensify, Brembo says that you're getting more control and stability by being able to brake on each individual wheel. Now, of course, brake-based torque vectoring isn't anything new in the auto industry, but Brembo is merging that with regenerative braking on electric cars and using the exact torque output on a car like the Tesla Model 3 as a data point to make the system smarter. And since it's all one system controlled by Brembo, they say it should be quicker and ultimately just safer. So let's put it to the test, first by trying a normal Tesla Model 3 with the standard old-school Brembo system and then the new Sensify one, which by the way, uses the same brake hardware, but has that electronic control and computer programming, which makes it more refined. So I am in here with the car uh, with Carrie from Brembo. Uh, so she is my shepherd as I am quite new to track stuff, but this uh, Model 3 Performance of course has normal Brembo Performance brakes, no Sensify in this. And our first test in the dry is doing 50 miles an hour straight line. We're just gonna do a simple ABS test, stop in a straight line. So let's get it done. We're accelerating to a constant 50 miles an hour. Triggering the ABS, stopped in time. Now we've got a 50 mile an hour run, but we're gonna stop at the wet point of the tracks or uh, the plateau, uh, courtesy of Carrie, as I know now it's called. So we're just gonna accelerate to that same 50 miles an hour. And now I'm gonna slam on the brakes. Triggering ABS still stopped pretty quickly. Now this is a higher speed 75 mile an hour turn. We're gonna be, again, testing how standard ABS performs with Model 3 performance brakes. Okay, go ahead and start accelerating. So we stopped. The uh, rear end got a little slippery there too. There's plenty of kinetic energy to stop. So we've got the sprinklers at the Michelin Lorenz Proving Grounds here creating wet conditions. What we're gonna do here is go at 50 miles an hour, go, go. hold our turn. So let's start accelerating now. Stop there. Uh, the car did kind of turn around a little bit in the wet there, 50 miles an hour with holding that turn. Now we're gonna do that with an obstacle. We're gonna be doing 40 miles an hour, avoiding an obstacle in the wet. This is the last scenario with the standard Model 3 performance brakes. So, could definitely feel ABS there. Did come to a stop, but directionally holding that angle was a little bit challenging. Alrighty, I'm here with Zach. Hi Zach, thanks uh, for being in the car with me. We are in the model. Thanks. Uh, we're in the Model 3 Performance, so we've got the Sensify in this one. We're going to be doing the same stuff basically I did with Carrie last time, but this time this is the new system, uh, all of the electromechanical, electrohydraulic control, all of that. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Zach, if I can ask you, what are the biggest things to expect with this system? If I'm a driver, uh, what's Sensify doing for me in terms of making the braking more intuitive or making it safer? Yeah, so you'll notice it immediately from the noise and vibration and harshness is there is a lot less noise, there's a lot less vibration, mm -hmm. and then because of that, it feels a lot less harsh. Now right. you're gonna still be doing full 1G panic stops, but 
it's not going to feel that way. Right. Um, you're not going to have the valve noises that you have in a traditional hydraulic system. You're not going to have the same amount of uh, changes in wheel slip that you have in a traditional And that's system. down to the more precise electronic controls um, of the system? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So we just have, we're able to fine tune exactly how much force we're putting in much better than a traditional yeah, hydraulic yeah, system. So you don't have large decreases in force and large jump ups. Awesome. And so blending that regenerative braking and the hydraulic braking, that's part of the Sensify system. How does that kind of work? Yeah, so we are able to receive the exact amount of torque that the OEM, in this case, uh, is making, and then we can decide how do we want to blend that with how much braking torque we create. Mm -hmm. So it can be a nice handoff of if the brake pedal is being pressed a little bit, maybe that's all regenerative. Once right. it starts going further, okay, now we start creating a little bit of torque to supplement the regenerative. So it, it allows us, because it's all software driven mm -hmm. and we have such quick, precise control, we're able to much easier kind of build in force as right. the regenerative force is. And we're gonna be stopping at these first set of signs to basically just see what it's like in the dry with Sensify. Exactly. <laughs> so that was pretty, uh, about the same stopping distance, but didn't really hear much there. Yeah. Yeah. Very quiet. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, uh, if you look at what Brembo's done, you know, it's been decades and decades of calipers and rotors and pads. And but. people get, you know, you see the Brembo caliper, that's, yes. that's a sign of performance, but you're hoping this is going to be in a lot of different kinds of cars yes. going forward. Yeah, this is definitely not as flashy as our other products. Uh -huh. It's gonna be under the hood. Yeah. But. Um, It'll help you when you need it, hopefully. Yes, yes yeah. it will. All right, let's get to 50 and we're gonna stop in the wet here with Sensify. Oh. All right. Okay, just a little bit of brake squeak, but uh, yep. far less noise than last time and stopping distance was just fine. Seemed very well controlled. There weren't any kind of weird bumps or uh, disturbances in that performance. So I think that was pretty good. Yeah. Accelerate to 50 miles an hour, which funnily enough by performance driving standards is considered slow, but we're gonna uh, just see what the system is like when I brake holding the line. Okay, that was um, forceful, felt the kinetic energy, but also uneventful. The car didn't really move in a way I didn't predict. I was able to hold the line, just holding the wheel. Yeah. And it's that white sign coming that up. White plaque okay. Here. Yep. Seventy. Okay. okay. I was very impressed by <laughs> the line the car held. Honestly, almost. I don't want to say ignoring my steering input, but it wasn't like, you know, the steering wheel in this Tesla is not particularly tuned like a track car. It's pretty, it's got a little bit of play, and yet the car, the, the, the brakes and everything with the dynamics of the car just kept me going where I would want to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, again, that's we're independently controlling the pressure at each wheel. You point the, the wheel, mm -hmm. our software then does the work of what do we need to do, Right. where do we need to put pressure, where do we need to take out pressure in yeah. order to get you to the place you want to be. And I know some manufacturers have done like, let's say, you know, brake based torque vectoring on yes. a certain wheel, but you yes. guys are taking control of that to basic, in these extreme situations, when you need the most optimization, the most yep. kind of, the margins might save your life basically. Yes, yeah. When milliseconds are the difference between missing or hitting something. Mm -hmm. That's what we're really focused on. Right. Here. Raptor track two from parking lot to, from Apex to parking lot to loop. All right, so went to stop pretty quickly there. I think about engaged ABS, but what I noticed is I, I felt like I was still putting, you know, like a, G, like a lot of force in, but it didn't feel like what I'm used to ABS feeling like. Maybe I wasn't quite as aggressive on the pedal there, but honestly, I thought we came to a stop pretty quickly. It just seemed more like a normal braking situation, to, at least from my end of things. Yeah, and that's the comment that we tend to get the most is, did I just do ABS? And I was looking at the trace, you just did ABS. Okay. You had a good spike um, of the brake pedal uh -huh. and it went into ABS and that was our version of 
anti-lock braking. It's just so much smoother. And I'm sure if you look at the last, I mean, I heard it, right? That there was this, there was the groan of the, the whine, basically, that sound. Yeah. That wasn't the tires, that was the brakes, basically, last time, right? So yeah, you don't tend to hear tire noise in mm -hmm. a traditional system mm -hmm. because you're hearing the valves, the hydraulic fluid moving, a lot of other mm -hmm. noises. In this yeah. car, you are almost entirely just hearing tire noise. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So we've had some drivers that really like that, some high performance drivers because- You can tell what the tires are doing because that's all you're hearing. Exactly, they're talking back to you. Okay, so we're gonna accelerate to 40 miles an hour and avoid the obstacle swerving left. Yep. Acceleration is always its own fun thing in these oh, EVs. I know. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I am by no means a skilled performance driver, but that made me feel like a lot more confident somehow. I'm not sure how to explain it so much. Yeah. It's just like the steering, um, the response didn't change. And it wasn't like, oh, the steering wheel was disconnected from the tires. I wasn't sure what the car was doing. Like, no, what I wanted to happen just kind of happened. I held on the brake, held the steering, and yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the goal. That's the goal is that basically you shouldn't have to do a whole lot of thinking. You should just point and mm -hmm. the car should go there. Yeah. And the car should be doing a lot of the hard work of, all right, putting a little extra brake torque here, mm -hmm. making it rotate a little bit more, yeah. pulling in the tail. You know, it's yeah. uh, really the job of, it's our job. Right. To make you look like a race car driver. <laughs> and, you know, in everyday performance, everyday driving situations, hopefully that's not a thing. I, that's not something I would want to encounter. But right, I right. will say I did feel more confident in this car yeah. than the uh, the white Model 3 we were in without it. Yeah. And the hope is, is that, like you said, you never did in that situation. But if you do, if a deer comes out in the middle of the road, if, mm -hmm. you know, something like that happens, you do want the ability to get around it bring the car to a fast and safe stop without mm -hmm. the fear of the car coming around. Yeah. And, you know, and also having confidence in those situations causes you to be more clear thinking, to have mm -hmm. better reactions. It felt like there was less that I was thinking about, which I think is a good thing. Yeah. So if you want to try and do the 50 mile an hour again up here. Okay. Um, Let me see if I can get to speed. So 50 and then turn. Yep. Okay. You'll definitely have to give it everything. Nicely done. Okay, I think even more kinetic energy stopping there. We weren't quite at 50 miles an hour, but yeah, that felt almost boring, which I think is a good thing in this that situation. Is, yep. It was like a yep. boring stop. There wasn't much action or drama to like skidding the rear end coming. No, it just kind of stopped. <laughs> That's exactly what we're going for. Yeah. And you know, one of the fun things that I'm, you know, I think about as a calibrator is, so what if, you know, Ford uh, has on the RS the drift mode? What if we add that to the brakes? So you can do it with the gas pedal or the brake pedal, Right. you know? So. Yeah, so this is not a system, obviously there's a lot of market benefits to EVs, but you see this as being integratable in the gas cars as well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, so we're gonna do that same obstacle avoidance at, what is it, 40, 50? 40 is 40. the goal, okay, yep. 40 is the goal. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think like it's the same brake hardware right in terms of the calipers the discs like it wasn't yep. like there was more it was just the control was just there the, control. Yep. the computer knew what to do yep yeah and as we're coming around I'm gonna start playing around a little bit with some of the parameters yeah so you can kind of get a feel for now this is rough what we've got in here but mm -hmm. this will give you a feel for how you could customize okay so Zach is on his laptop right now obviously this is a pre-production system but he's basically going to configure some of these parameters and this is going to give me a different feel to the brake I guess yes yeah so it'll change how it feels so if you just do a slight brake apply right now not a stop like a hard stop but uh -huh. just a okay so that's kind of that's our a control baseline yep that's your control that's your standard pedal yeah. kind of in the middle uh-huh so i just bopped you up to the sport if you want to kind of pick okay up a so i'm going to get to that same 40-ish mile an hour speed i was at and then I'll let me lightly apply the brakes yep okay <laughs> the pedal <laughs> that's interesting it wasn't just like i was expecting okay maybe the car has a different response to that pedal no the pedal like had different feedback <laughs> yes yeah. yeah so and then i'm going to switch it now all the way to our comfort mode okay um just keep going down here yeah. Okay, so this is comfort, so I'm going to that same 40 mile an hour-ish speed. Yep. And yeah, it's a lot mushier. It's, it's you know, if I were in a, let's see, like a Civic Corolla, this is probably what I would want. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's not the character of the Model 3 performance, but it is kind of interesting. This is the kind of thing, so 
you imagine people could change this with a drive mode or Absolutely. the or the OEM could pick which one which kind of profile they want to give. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, when you get in a Corvette, you can change the drive mode and you get suspension changes, you mm -hmm. get shift point changes, you get engine cowl changes. Mm -hmm. You don't get brake changes. And now we're adding that. Yeah. We're giving people another that. level of configurability. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, personally for me, that's one of the more exciting parts of this of just yeah. being able to have a nice daily driver, mm -hmm. and then when you need to turn it on, switch a mode, you, boom. You're seeing that with EVs, the, where they have different characters, because of course you can finally control the motors and the torque and the going fast side of things, but this yeah. is applying that to the brakes, right? Exactly. That's yeah. awesome. Taking, taking brakes into the next generation of yeah. automotive technology, because it is, in one sense, you do kind of see brakes lagging behind the, you know, the motor technology, mm -hmm. the transmission and it's, technology. And it's a good thing for brakes to be conservative, oh, right? We've 100%. had them, you know, for however long, but yep. this is kind of just trying to make them more intuitive for people, yep. let people customize them in, within it. safe parameters. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna be going 50 miles an hour and then Zach is gonna actually trigger, let's imagine a deer run across the road, some kind of an emergency braking situation. So we're gonna see what the car is capable of in an emergency, which hopefully you won't be in. So I'm gonna let you know once I'm off the pedal. All right, three, two, one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that, that shifts your brain a little bit. Um, yeah. You, of course, you know, a mile three performance, anyone who's driven this car is no stranger to the feeling of that acceleration. This just flips <laughs> yeah. that, right? You, yep. you get that for the, and um, you don't want that, but if you need it, you need it. You need it, exactly. So uh, with that automatic emergency braking, that was powerful, but what is Sensify doing that's different from Tesla's, you know, standard emergency braking? Yeah, so it's, it's the same functionality. The difference is our system is quicker to lock. So uh -huh. we're able to build force at the wheels much quicker than traditional hydraulic systems. And that comes down to how the actual calipers are controlled? Yeah, so in a traditional system, you have a control unit, usually somewhere up at the hood, and then it sends hydraulic pressure to each of the wheels. Mm -hmm. In our system, we have individual actuators at each corner. And on so each wheel, on yeah. On each wheel, so you're not having, that force is not having to travel uh -huh. nearly as far. and. It may sound silly, yeah. but we're tens of milliseconds are worth everything. So it's an electronic system, but yep. you're doing it because the latency is that much better. Exactly. It's that much quicker. Exactly. And it, I mean, it's it, it's one of those things where it's, uh, as a human, I don't think I can quite perceive the difference, mm -hmm. but I did, you know, it did seem like the sensation of you, you know, hit whatever you did on the laptop and the car did stop right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, thanks so much for giving me an inside look at uh, Sensify, Zach. That was great. Yeah. Um, like you said, you know, this is not the most intuitively exciting thing to imagine in a car, but seeing it on the track today, I saw that um, I believe this could save people's lives. It was, uh, it made me feel a lot more confident too. So I can definitely see a case for this in the performance world. So really cool stuff. Excellent. Well, thanks for coming out. I'm glad you enjoyed your time. Thanks. All right, so that was Sensify at work in the Model 3 performance. I was uh, first, you know, it's a kind of abstract to hear about this electromechanical uh, braking system working with computers. It doesn't make a lot of sense when you hear it at first, but when I saw it on the track, wow, I was, uh, as a non-performance driver, kind of impressed by how good I felt, how little of the sensations you normally get during panic braking that I had. The car seemed much more in control. So I can definitely see a case for this in terms of safety and in terms of performance and uh, the enthusiast market. Well, you can totally see cars like the Model 3 or other cars that would you know use this system being more configurable. Right now you can get different throttle responses. Well, you can also get different braking feel and the pedal actually communicated that back to me. So that was really interesting to see. But uh, what do you think? Do you think this could be uh, in your next car? Do you want to see this in your gas cars and your EVs? What do you think of this kind of next generation of braking systems? What, what, what Brembo is doing here? Let us know in the comments. I have been Max of TFL. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see all the content we do, be it trucks, off-road, EVs, everything, well, one place for that, all TFL.com. Thanks so much.